Are you looking for a graphics card that won't break the bank and will let you play multiplayer titles at around 100 FPS plus or even AAA titles at the base minimum 60 FPS? My name is Alex and this is a review of this RX 6400. The one we have here is the Swift 105. What we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be unboxing, checking out the features and give you a conclusion based on the tests, whether this graphics card is for you. So stick around. The card has a low profile design making this a good choice for small ITX builds. With the inclusion of the adapter bracket, you have the option to plug this into a variety of desktop computers like the Dell Optiplex or an old HP Elite desk. As for this particular model, the Swift 105, XFX has beefed up the cooling compared to AMD's reference card. Also, additional features were implemented such as 0 dB cooling which makes your fan run at efficient RPMs depending on the load. XFX has also included a 3-year warranty upon registration of your product at xfxsupport.com. However, on this particular model that we have here, the Swift 105, it is around 190 US dollars. So, we'll let you be the judge if this price is worth it for the performance that it can give us. This card also features GDDR6 memory and is on PCIe 4.0 interface. It supports DirectX 12 Ultimate, DXR, Fidelity, FX, FSR, and lastly, Smart Access Memory. We wanted to make the testing of this graphics card interesting, so what we wanted to do was we want to put the graphics card in a mid-tier machine and another one is with a low-end system. However, the low-end system that we have, which is a 4-core, 8-thread CPU, doesn't work anymore. Our test bench is a Ryzen 5900X with 32 gigs of G-Skill Ripjaws 3600 CL17 memory on an entry-level MSI VDH Wi-Fi B550 motherboard. No overclocking was done on the system, but XMP profile was enabled. As for the synthetic benchmarks, we'll start it off with 3 Mark Fast Track Ultra to stress test the GPU muscle. Luckily, the RX 6400 does come with 4 GB VRAM, so 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra was able to run at 3 resolutions. We use TimeSpy for Direct X12. This also requires at least 4 GB VRAM, so we met the minimum requirements to run at least 3 resolutions. V-Ray calculates how well a card can handle path tracing. A lighting technique commonly used in 3D rendering and animation. These numbers that we see at the end is the number of millions of paths and paths that were rendered during the 1 minute benchmark. This is Luxmark 3.1, a test on how well a GPU can handle OpenCL based engines. Fermark is another GPU stress test that aims to predict what a card can take rather than what it can do for extended periods of time. This will give you an idea on how the GPU will hold up for full load rendering. Unigine Superposition is to test Unigine's graphics engine. However, we are supposed to run the 4K optimized preset. However, the RX 6400 doesn't have enough VRAM to do so. So we only did the 1080p medium and extreme. Now, for the AAA game titles, now, what's interesting here is that I didn't expect this GPU to perform quite well in these modern titles. However, I was surprised with the experience that it gave me with a little bit of compromise in graphics quality. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we did 3 resolutions at high preset with DirectX 12 on. We wanted to test with Far Cry 6 but I don't have it yet so suppose, please support the channel for us to grow at least and provide you with updated games. However. With Far Cry 5, this is still a very GPU-intensive, heavy AAA title. However, it is known to be optimized for AMD, Radeon GPUs at least, and we tested it with 3 resolutions and on the favor quality preset. Final Fantasy XIV and Walkers is a free benchmark tool and can give you an idea on how well the GPU will do in MMORPG titles. We tested this on three resolutions and the results, however, is not an FPS test but rather a proprietary rating. Can it run Red Dead Redemption 2? Yes, it can to say at least and we did the built-in benchmarks on two resolutions. 
at high settings. Battlefield 5 on 1080p max fidelity preset looked really great and still is very playable at around 60fps. This is on campaign mode however. If you're on the multiplayer mode, you really need to dial down to have a better game experience. Low settings on Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p is I think what is the ideal setting if you're gonna have a great experience. However, if you enable FSR 2.0, this will be enhanced. So stay tuned for another video for FSR 2.0. Moving on to the multiplayer titles, this is where this card really shines. Starting off with CSGO, one of the most popular multiplayer FPS games, we tested this on 1080p high and I sucked but the GPU performed quite well. Valorant is another popular multiplayer title that my son loves to play and we tested it on high 1080p as well. However, hovering at 200 FPS, I'll let you be the judge on how the card performed. Enemy One enemy remaining. <sighs> Flawless. Careful now. Call of Duty Modern Warfare at 1080p, low preset settings gave us a decent minimum of 70 FPS. Yes, Modern Warfare is really demanding in terms of system resources. However, Call of Duty Vanguard does support FSR 2.0 and I wish they would roll out that feature on Modern Warfare so that we can all enjoy extra performance with this game using FSR. Finally, one of my favorite multiplayer games, Dota 2, I was confident enough to test this GPU on a ranked match and it did not disappoint. I was on high settings preset on 1080p and the FPS and also the gameplay is really really smooth. There were no stutters or jump frames or whatsoever. I was just purely focusing on the game and it ran really smooth. For the power consumption, we measured the maximum load while running 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra. And as for the temperature as well, we measured the maximum load while running 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra.
For the noise meter, we also measured the noise while there is maximum load while running 3D Mark Power Strike Ultra. We were measuring at around 56 decibels. For your information, 40 decibels is like a quiet room, office room. 20 decibels is like a whisper. But however, we did the measurement just below the card. If we close the case, then we cannot really hear anything from the card. It is dead silent to be honest. So who is this GPU for? So one of the best use case scenarios that I can recommend is, for example, if you have an old Dell Optiplex or an old HP desktop, uh, like a minimum of four cores probably, then you can actually use this GPU and convert that into a gaming PC for 1080p. As you've seen on our results, you can actually play titles, but you would need to dial down some settings. Other than that, you can also use this in small form factor builds if you're gonna be like building a multimedia rig for your living room or for example, if you're into SFF form factor PCs, then this is one option if you're building a 1080p budget gaming machine. If even if, if LAN parties are still a thing, then this is really great as it's really small and it only draws power from the PCIe. That's also one thing. We want to give a huge shout out to XFX Middle East for letting us test this very, very budget friendly yet. The performance is actually, in my opinion, it's really good when it comes to 1080p gaming. This budget of around 100, 190 USD for this one, like $30 more than the MSRP, right? So the MSRP of this one is 160 USD if I'm not mistaken. So that's one thing that I wished AMD did is probably they would have made this into a 140 card probably. Why? Because because they can <laughs> or because no why? Because the 1050 Ti um, the 1050 Ti way back then was at around 139 USD when it first came out the MSRP. So I've had that card for some time back like three years I had the 1050 Ti. So I just wish that they've, you know, made the price at 140 USD, but that's just me wishful thinking. That's it for this video. Guys, did you like it? Are you waiting for AM5 sockets to come out and buy the new hardware? Or are you still in AM4? What do you think? Is this the best budget card that you can get based on the performance? What do you think? Like if you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And by the way, why am I showing the box? The graphics card is there, okay? <laughs> Let me know what you think, guys, and see you on the next video. Take care. <laughs>